today's construction day 95. So uh, it's the end of another work week. Uh, you guys know the roof's going on. And uh, the last two days, it's been so windy up here. I feel bad for Alex and his crew. Uh, they're definitely struggling with the insulation in those long panels. Uh, we caught a little bit of a break here at lunchtime on Saturday uh, with the wind. But I'm sure throughout this update, it's going to kick up a little bit. Uh, but yeah, definitely things going on up at the work site, and uh, we're happy with the progress. Uh, we have another showcase for you guys. So it's uh, Leo. He's uh, a Filipino citizen, and he's lived in Australia for 32 years. And uh, he comes back and forth quite a bit visiting, and uh, he owns property in Karan. Palawan very beautiful area and I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you a couple photos of uh, his build that's going on right now So uh, what you guys think uh, I think the house looks great. It's uh, still in the construction stage um, This is going to be Leo's uh, second home because he owns property uh, in Dumaguete as well. So he's also going to be building a home there. He's getting close to retirement age and uh, he's going to be able to go back and forth between Palawan and Dumaguete. So it's a, a beautiful house. Uh, I know it's a beautiful area. You were mentioned that you have an ocean view. So uh, congratulations, Leo. The house looks fantastic. Uh, so uh, let's get up to the uh, work site and uh, see what's going on. Alright, so right here in the very front of the house, uh, they did get the uh, footings in yesterday, so that dried overnight. And then now they're building uh, the wall uh, that extends out that two meters uh, to meet the two meter overhang. So uh, this is starting uh, to work on the porch area. So it looks like they have uh, three courses. Uh, so again, they're always the same process, uh, the rebar in and they fill the hollow block uh, with fresh cement. And it looks like they got uh, three courses done here uh, lunchtime on Friday. All right, so uh, we've been battling the wind. It's been very windy here yesterday uh, as well as today. Uh, it's here lunchtime on Saturday, and it looks like we caught a little bit of a break, but all morning long the guys have been battling uh, the wind. So to get the uh, insulation in place as well as those long sheets, uh, they've actually uh, pulled a couple extra guys up on the roof uh, just to help hold everything uh, in place. Uh, but they've been battling the, the wind here for a couple days. But here in the main area, 
Uh, they have all the insulation in and all the metal roofing in and secure. Uh, so now what they're doing is uh, they're switching over to the spare bedrooms and bathroom side, which will extend out to cover the dirty kitchen in one sheet. Uh, so they're going to be working on that this afternoon. So as I mentioned yesterday, there's uh, four traditional uh, door frames and then the one uh, barn door that'll go into the spare bedroom. So they have uh, the one going to the master in place. There's the boss. Uh, there's that one's built, ready to go in today. And then the two for the spare bedrooms, they have them built as well. Uh, so I'll, I'll do my best to film when they actually have all the door frames in place and plumb. And you can see how they use these uh, metal strips to secure everything and they just rivet it in. And then they just screw it into the uh, cement to hold everything in place. And this is to keep the door jam uh, perfectly uh, plumb. So the doors fit in nicely. Same thing on this side. You see how they uh, went ahead and riveted in, riveted in to hold it in place. Um, and then they'll fill it in with cement. Uh, and another thing Wilma just mentioned, and it's true, it's definitely darker in here with the roof on. I mean, that's that's obvious. But it's much cooler in here, right? A lot cooler. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're surprised. I mean, it's, it's usually pretty cool up here anyway. Uh, so that breeze that comes off the ocean is coming right in this area here. Uh, and then uh, with this doorway open, uh, it allows it to pass through. Uh, so not only is there that normal breeze, but now with the uh, roof in place, uh, I'm going to guess and say five degrees cooler. Uh, much cooler in here, so we're happy about that for sure. So I'm going to take a few minutes and talk about the flashing. So uh, when I explain the flashing here uh, in this main room, it's going to repeat in the two other roofs, the two smaller 10-foot roofs. Uh, exact same process because... Uh, these walls were designed the exact same way, just three different times. So, as you guys know, this main beam has that very large hollow block wall sticking up, straight up. And it's all rendered. And it's also the same wall all the way down. You saw it when they installed it. You can see it up there. It's hollow block. And then you can see where the rendering starts. And that sticks up. And we designed that specifically to block the wind. So when there is a storm that comes from the east, which is that way, and the prevailing winds is that direction, and we got that information from the architect, we designed this. So the hollow block wall right there is higher than the roof. So when the prevailing winds come this way, it will hit this hollow block wall, thus protect the wedge type roof. So uh, that's the way we designed it. And it's all across the front and down the sides of all three sections of the roof. And then someday I'll climb in the back and show you guys what that looks like in the back and it'll make more sense. But what I wanna show you is the flashing. So the roof here, goes to the hollow block where you can see daylight up there. See the daylight? So obviously there'd be leaks. So the flashing prevents that. So here's the flashing. And the way this is designed is it is designed to be at the right length uh, here, the right length here, to be able to rest on one of the ribs. You know the ribs of the uh, metal roofing that go up? It's designed to lay right on them. And then this piece here will go up on an angle similar to this. So let me back up. You see how it's on an angle? So this is about approximately a half inch. So they're gonna saw cut deep into the rendered wall up in the ceiling, up in the roof, and they will insert this with a ceiling, and it will be pressed inside 
and go right, right in the half inch. And then what that will do, if sealed properly, the rendered wall would be all the way out here, like right where my hand is. And then the rainwater would just come down and go away and go past the first rib of the metal roofing and then just channel that five degrees down. So this is designed for this type of wall. So this would all be riveted into that rib. It'll be ripped and also sealed. This will also be sealed and riveted. And then this will be attached. And then there'll be a saw cut and this will insert. And then it will essentially be on an angle, just like this. Up all the way around. All the way around. All three uh, levels of the roof. And that will seal off any rainwater that could possibly get between the metal roofing and these rendered walls up there. So I hope that uh, makes sense to you guys. All right, so uh, I just got done doing the uh, clip on the flashing. So I wanted to try to explain what I mean by the uh, hollow block rendered walls that we created to block the wind uh, for this roof. <clears throat> so if you can see there, I'm in the back, I'm here in the dirty kitchen, and you can see that the hollow block rendered walls is about six to eight inches higher than the roof. And the roof pitches back to me five degrees. So the storms primarily come from the east, which is that way. So we designed it where this concrete rendered wall, as well as this large wall for the main roof, and that's about 12 inches higher than the roof. And then it repeats and then also repeats uh, to look exactly like this on the uh, master side. So if we get a storm from the front or from the sides, uh, one would think that with this shed type roof pitching back and this concrete hollow block rendered wall, basically on three sides of the home, uh, this roof would be protected. And that's exactly how it was designed. Now we are exposed here from the back. And we all know typhoons come uh, from all different directions. Uh, but primarily, they come from the east. Uh, so there is some risk back here. Uh, but this is the lowest part of the roof. This is where the wedge comes back five degrees and ends back here. So it's the lowest profile possible. And then here in the back, there'll be fascia. And I haven't uh, showed you the fascia that we have. This will all be end capped off and sealed. Uh, but I just wanted to take a few minutes and uh, show you the design that we created. And the architect was uh, able to get it to blueprint for us uh, to protect us uh, from uh, potential storms. All right, so here's a good look of the back of the main roof. So uh, I'm still back here by the dirty kitchen. And here's the first look of the fascia. So uh, you can see I'm putting it on there. So they put it up underneath the overhang. See the overhang of the metal roof? The fascia goes underneath. And then there's still that void. I don't know if you could see it, but there's still a void underneath, underneath the fascia. So that's gonna be uh, all Hardy Flex uh, cement board that'll go from the fascia right out on top of the concrete beam and then we'll continue, we'll be part of the uh, ceiling of the house. So basically what I'm saying is the ceiling of the house, the hardy flex, the cement board, will come out over top of that beam and come all the way out and seal off uh, this outside overhang so uh, you know nothing can get into the uh, attic area uh, from uh, the roof. And they also started today the, uh, this wall between the two columns here in the carport, uh, between uh, the ending of the home and the two meter overhang. So you can see that they have a few courses in and the rebar in between. And then they have the rebar sticking out of the columns that they will uh, straighten out 
and embed in the walls to help with uh, making them secure. But uh, this hollow block wall will go up and I'll be rendered and uh, painted the same color as the house. All right, so yesterday's video regarding these front columns and how we're going to handle uh, decorating them uh, really got Wilma and I talking last night. And uh, I want to first thank everyone. A lot of great ideas, uh, you know, different versions. Uh, you know, it's funny when you get, you know, 20, 30, 40 comments regarding a topic. Uh, sometimes you get, you know, many, many different options. Everybody has different tastes. Uh, so if you go back and look at all the comments, you'll see that, uh, you know, some people say, oh, no, it needs to be rocks on all the walls uh, or no rocks or maybe uh, go up five feet or go up seven feet and then paint uh, towards the top. I mean, all different versions. And again, I appreciate all the comments. Um, and it's just everyone has different tastes. But uh, Wilma and I talked it over and we have plenty of time here. Uh, there's no rush. But uh, one of the things that Wilma and I talked about is uh, to keep it in the modern type of home. I mean, call this American modern, Western modern, California modern. You know, people call it different things. Uh, modern bungalow uh, because it's a one floor home. Um, we're probably now going to lean away from putting any type of stonework on any of the columns. Uh, so, Wilma, you agree with that, right? Yes, definitely I agree with you. We're trying to keep the modern look, look of the house and uh, elegant. Yeah, elegant. That's a good word. Yeah, elegant. So, uh, what we talked about, and again, this is all subject to change, but we'll more than likely paint the three columns that are 60 mm white because that's going to be the color of the house. And then we're going to wait for this 90 centimeter large reveal column. We're not gonna paint that white, uh, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna wait for the glass to get installed. And you guys know that that's a bronze color, and I'm not exactly clear uh, what the uh, framing of the glass is gonna look like yet. I still need to, to go to the window factory and see what my options are. Uh, hope, hopefully it's a bronze color, uh, but uh, once the glass is in place, that's going to put a lot of color here because you know that that glass has that bronze tint to it. So we want to look at that bronze tint and then, then make a decision at that point uh, what would look good uh, to paint this column to go with all that bronze that's going to be in front of the house. So I hope that makes sense. Uh, like I said, we got plenty of time. I don't think we make a decision here without having the glass in place. And then once the glass is in place, that's going to help us choose the color uh, that will paint this uh, 90 cm reveal column. 